So you can predict whether a metal will displace the ions of a less active metal by looking at an activity series. So over here we have an activity series that we could look at. So the more active metal oxidizes to its iron, the less active metal's ions are reduced to the solid metal. So let's have a look. What would occur when an iron nail is submerged in a zinc nitrate solution? So let's have a look. We'll look through our activity series. We have iron here and we have zinc here. So in this case, we're putting an iron nail, which is less active, into a solution of a more active metal. So in this case, what's going to happen? Nothing. So the zinc placed in an iron solution, we would see a reaction. But the solid iron being placed in a zinc solution, we have a less active metal being placed in a solution of a more active metal's ions. Um, these ions are already oxidized. They're already really stable. So they're not going to go back spontaneously unless we put in energy, for example. So in this case, nothing would happen. So in this question, uh, we've got solid chromium going into solution of sodium ions. So let's find where they are. So here's chromium and here's sodium. So I think, again, we have a solid metal that is less active than the ions of the metal in the solution that it's going into. So again, what's going to happen here? Nothing. And again, to explain, sodium oxidizes really easily. So it's oxidizing to its um, ions very, very easily. And that means it's very hard to push it back the other way. So the chromium oxidizing here, it's not going to be able to force by producing electrons. It's not going to be able to force the um, sodium ions to reduce back to the solid sodium. You need to put in an awful lot of energy to get that to happen. So in this case, the reaction won't happen again either. Let's look at this example. So now we've got nickel and lead. So let's find nickel. So here's nickel and here's lead. So now our solid nickel um, is uh, more active than the solution that's being put. So the lead ions are aqueous down here. So in this case, a reaction will happen. So let's figure out what's happening. So the nickel is more active, so it's going to be oxidized. So the solid nickel is going to be oxidized, so nickel is going to go to nickel ions, so we're going nickel 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. The lead ions in the solution are going to be reduced. So the Pb2 plus, the lead 2 plus ions, plus 2 electrons, goes to solid lead. So here we have oxidation, oxidation is loss, here we have reduction, reduction is gain, so lead ions are gaining electrons to form solid lead. So our overall equation is nice and easy here because the electrons will cancel out. So we've got nickel solid plus lead ions, Pb2 plus ions in solution, aqueous, goes to nickel ions, aqueous, and we would see solid lead forming around the piece of nickel. So lead solid. All right, our last example is reacting magnesium with silver ions. So down here we have a video playing, and thanks to Resource for doing this. So there's a mixture of solid magnesium powder and a silver salt, and some water has been sprayed on this. So you can see the water drops coming in. And then we get a big explosion happening. So what's happening there? Well, let's find out our metals here. So we've got magnesium up here, and we've got silver down here. So there's a big gap in reactivity, and when that happens, that means you get usually fairly big reactions happening, because there's a big difference in energy between... Uh, the oxidation and the reduction reactions. So that partially explains the big explosion here. The other reason for the explosion is magnesium, when it catches on fire, gives off a nice big bright white flame. So the energy being produced is enough to catch the magnesium powder on fire, so we get a nice big explosion. So we have a more active metal, in this case magnesium, in a solution, when we flew the water on, of a less active metal's iron. So that's silver down here. So we will get a reaction, as we just saw in the video. So the magnesium is being oxidized. So magnesium goes to magnesium ions. Uh, 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So the magnesium is really reactive, so it gives off its electrons really readily. The silver ions from the salt in the mix down here, uh, they are going to be reduced. Silver uh, ions readily reduce. It's really low on the reactivity series. So the silver ions again, plus an electron, are going to solid silver. So now we can do our reaction equation. And again, we're going to have to multiply the bottom one here by 2 to balance out the number of electrons. And I'm just going to assume that's happened. So the magnesium, ion, uh, magnesium is reacting with two silver ions. And that produces magnesium ions and two silvers. So solid silver would be being produced here, but that would explode with the magnesium that's left over. 
magnesium ions in that little bit of water there, uh, silver ions, and solid magnesium over here. So today on Flipping Science we looked at uh, metal activity and how that applies to displacement reactions. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.